Hello, everyone. In today's episode of Let's Talk FGO, we've just got a few little news updates for you because there is a new audio call coming soon and also other things coming soon. So I hope you're ready to turbo that lotto because you don't have time to rest on your laurels. But everyone, I wish you a beware Ides of March. I am your host, Caesar Salad Omega. With me, as always, 60 Knives Lucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hope everyone's enjoying Fate Grand Order, a.k.a. No, th- no bathroom bakes on this trip. And while we're here at Studio Mega, I'd like to bring you the latest NFJ related news and memes. We will be talking about current and future events with the JP and EM version of the game, so anyone not want a spoiler should go experience many emotions, like confusion. Yes, so uh, some of you may be comparing what will inevitably be this week's time left in this episode and last week's episode which was like four hours and be a little confused so i'll say at the top uh i'm not done with final fantasy 7 rebirth yet i am on schedule to to finish it soon but as of this recording i'm not done yet and i'll probably remind everybody at the end of this but basically our plan is to shoot the normal show real quick we're gonna run through it i'll edit it post it like normal and then saturday when this goes live to public on youtube for everybody That same day, we're going to live stream a spoiler cast, which will be all about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and especially about spoilers, once I'm all caught up on everything. Yes. Uh, Because I'm I'm pretty much in the final stretch. Uh, You know, I'm about 90 hours in, and I have, you know, two, uh, technically three. Gold Gold Saucer 2 is also a set piece. So we got three big set pieces to go, pretty sure. But there's also loads of uh, side content to catch up with all your favorite NPCs and stuff as well. But... We'll do a big spoiler cast, so this episode is obviously going to be shorter, because it'll mostly be about FGO news, mailbag, a little bit of some other stuff. There are a couple of other news items to cover, and then, you know, like I said, big, presumably big spoiler cast, Livstrom. Livstrom. So we'll catch up with you later. But before we get into the regularly scheduled Let's Take FGO, let's remind everybody real quick, this episode is brought to you by our patrons, like Adam Hart, Buck Zaji, Call Me Zed, Carlos, Dragon, Fight, Size Bird, Jeremy Vasquez, JDV9000, Just Fay, Starlight, Legendary Boss Hunter, Bleak, Hustler, Regent Raptor, Rise of Kenji, Rogue Robin, Charvor, Sean Pryor, Some Guy Named Bob, and Varen the Crow. If you like what you do, want to do more, consider supporting us on Patreon. Get access to episodes early and lots of other goodies. It really helps us out. Thank you for your support, as always. Thank you. Well, that means that it is probably just, you know, we're, while I'm not in a rush, per se, this episode won't take very long, so we can just proceed down the line. It means it's time to check in with everybody's favorite Kohai, Mesh. Senpai! Senpai! Okite kudasai! Because it is time for Wake the Fuck Up Senpai, regular segment for Pro Tips. So, this one is uh, kind of, you know, contextual, but I do know that not everybody is checking their social medias, especially as FGO is still mostly on Facebook and Twitter. So, we do already have a social media campaign for our next event, Water Monitor. Well, blah. Water Monster Crisis. Don't know why that's so hard to say. Though I do think I would have preferred if they call it Sea Monster Crisis because there's fewer letters, but maybe the logo wouldn't have been as hip. But they've already, technically they already announced that would be late March anyway in our roadmap, but they already have also posted the social media campaign for Extra Saint Courts, and that ends the 28th. So just everybody keep your eyes out. That will probably be uh, around then it will launch basically right after our current Tesla Fest ends with no breaks at all. So, yeah, you got to watch out for them contents because we're uh, we're going to start crunching now. Broken like a runaway train. Yep. So that's just a thing to keep your eyes peeled. We'll talk to you more a little bit about that later. Mm-hmm. Real quick, let's check in with Records on the Throne, our regular achievement topic. Yes, we have these. Uh, while mine is listed second, because I remembered it literally when I checked in and saw Lucky Tech his, <laughs> I'll say mine real quick because I'm speaking, which is just that I got Castorated Bond 10 finally. It happened during Ooh. the uh, White Day farming. So, yeah, we're there. It's pretty decent. I actually, yeah, I actually do use uh, Castoria's bond um, in my uh, art loops because hers is attack up uh, and yeah, and uh, MPJ. Yes, yeah, so I'm like, mm, no, perfect. No, I solid. need this. Very good. Probably for um, uh, for challenge quest type stuff, I would prefer my normal trick, which is to use uh, demonic bodhisattva for the uh, overcharge, get those extra hits of uh, enforcement defense. But yeah, just for farming, the NP gain and attack up for the whole team is just useful. Yeah, the only problem I have with, like, such CEs is both those effects are just, you know, one-time use. Yeah. And then you're just sitting with a bum car, and I'm just like, ah. It does give you a little bit of stats, but yeah, it's 
it's better if you can get continuous stuff, but you know, sometimes the the invul's all you needs. Yes. So on my end, uh, I did not do uh, something nearly as illustrious, but I did manage to get Anastasia and uh, Watanabe no Sune's smiles protected. I took full advantage of the Lost Belt one times two experience. It was well, um, it wasn't time to experience. It was um, extra suck chance. Extra suck. Excuse me. Got make sure I say that properly. But um, it turns out that uh, Anastasia was the only one that wasn't uh, max level, and that's only because I, I got Anastasia uh, somewhat recently in the grand scheme of things. So, yay! Another two off of the list. I am slowly but surely closing in. Nice. Well, that means we can roll. On down to, did you finish your master missions? To complete your master missions this week, you need to defeat three lawful and three neutral servants, defeat 15 humanoid trait enemies and 15 demonic trait enemies, and then get 15 EXP of any type drops, and then 30 EXP of any type drops. So basically, do the event. Uh, if you can't find lawfuls, neutrals, humanoids, and demonics in here, uh, I'm pretty sure you can beat up guys in Fuyuki also for most of these as well, so... It should be pretty simple, but you will hopefully accomplish all of those while running your Tesla Fest comps. Because that means we can check in with Skelegrams, as it will be uh, fairly brief. Uh, the main thing in NA is Battle in New York 2024 has started. Started the 15th, ends the 28th. So again, that's, you know, the same day the social media campaign for Sea Monster Crisis ends. So I'm expecting that we'll just flow right into each other. And basically, it's just like we drew it up the other week when I did the pregame. Uh, I don't believe there have been any other additional updates or quality of life or anything. We've got the banners you expect. It's the lotto event. you got the stuff going on. Uh, I have to admit, I haven't uh, touched it at all yet because, like I said, I have been fucking crunching. I have been cramming uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Not in a bad way, just, you know, there's a lot to do. But it should be pretty straightforward to get into. And like I said, we did a pregame. Pretty sure that was last week's episode. Yes because they announced it kind of suddenly, so uh, you can check that out there if you need any tips or tricks. Keep your eyes out. Uh, the big one in JP, though, is that we have a name and a time frame for audio call number two, which is uh, titled Irreversible Waste Hole Id. So, uh, yeah, you know, I, I have at this time have no further notes. I'll let you know when I figure it out, which will probably be in like two years. Well, it's not that there's like no other notes. Um, one of the things they have mentioned about this event is that it will contain spoilers for Prison Tower. Yes, this is true, actually. Um, which is available in the, the RP shop permanently in JP and also over here, so there's that. Uh, I, I do believe some people have also pointed out that basically the way the, the White Day spread works is that like one of the few servants they're going to... Uh, let's see, did they... Let me double check it, JP, actually. Is it that we announced a Dante's banner or that uh, we're just going to, uh, we would line up with Dante's read up being when this is starting. God, sorry, I'm trying to navigate. But yeah, a, a lot of people feel like there is some, you know, uh, Dante's vibes coming. Let's see, that's those. Super okay. Dante's. Some campaigns, the normal ones. Yeah, Dante's is limited, so he's not normally in the rotation. Yes, yeah, some people are like. <sighs> There's a little bit of a discussion, I don't want to say a conflict, but there's a, there's like a discussion going around in our community and elsewhere. Like, a lot of people, because some of the keywords involved, like Tokyo and stuff, are like, oh, does it have to do with prototype or fragments? Um, and some people were like, oh, well, this, you know, irreversible waste hole doesn't sound like it's related to, to prototype necessarily. But prototype fragments author did write Prison Tower, so it's possible if Prison Tower stuff is coming back, that we may, you know, actually be getting the prototype, uh, you know, callback or tie-in that people are expecting. So I guess we'll see how it slams. We will see. We do have the stream date, though. Uh, the stream will be the 20th, so you still got a little under a week, but it's coming soon. It'll be a story drop. Uh, obviously, you need a clear audio call uh, one to actually get in there. Uh, I believe that they are starting off a uh, new round of daily login bonuses leading up to this, so login for extra, uh, you know, Ember's tickets and stuff like that. And also, uh, very interesting, but I think I kind of like this uh, mod, but specifically during this week or so before it uh, fires off, uh, Masters who cleared Ordeal Call 1 will get double suck chance and half AP Embers until the time period is over, around the 20th. So, yeah, uh, I think there are a couple of times where the bonuses have been gated to content clears, but it's not super frequent, but I think it is a nice little touch. It's basically like, hey, 
Are you caught up with story? Cool. Make sure everybody's leveled for your next story. But yeah, uh, expect next week us to have a much more full-bodied show about FGO because there will presumably be a you know new story drop and everything. For now, we're just chilling on Testafest. But as I did mention before in the uh, pro tips area, we do have the social media campaign for uh, Water Monster Crisis up already. That ends the 28th. So judging by like where that falls and so on and so forth, uh, that means that I'll be doing the pregame for that, which will probably be a little more in-depth also next week on the 22nd because we've got, you know, a couple of weeks before it'll fire. But just, you know, keep yourself aware, apprised, interested, et cetera, et cetera. And yeah. And uh, for now, that's the uh, the news. The uh, Charlemagne event is proceeding apace. We've just started the Tesla Fest. So uh, yeah, it's going to be busy soon, but right now is just normal. And I'm very glad for normal uh, mic-canceling levels, because I ho- hopefully the audience at home, especially after I edit this, can't hear the crescendos of Cosmo Canyon in the background. Yes, I do have Final Fantasy VII Rebirth open at this very moment. I know what I'm doing here. (laughs) I can't play it and read my show notes at the same time just because of the geography of my room, but, you know, we're cooking. But that is going to be our news, which means it's time for my bug. For my bug. Maybe my baby bug. I'm just gonna make word mouse sounds. But yes, it is time for this week's Let's Talk FGO Mailbag, the segment where we... Read comments that you send in and comment accordingly. I use comment twice in the same sentence. I am a failure of a human being. No, you're We're just gonna... improvising. You're not edited. No. People who don't repeat words, uh, you know, are people who are on script. Yeah. Nevertheless, nonetheless, know the less. Never less. Pay less we shoe have... store. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. <laughs> Talking about improv. <laughs> We have four four lovely submissions, and we will get through them all. So we will start off. Uh, Monster Girl Aficionado, currently drinking a mimosa. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just see that this was posted uh, seven hours ago, and I'm just like, that's a lot of mimosa. But they say... Long sip. The biggest sip. They say, dear Lucky Omega, no question this week, just sending good vibes. Wah, 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 wah. And wishing you well. Keep up the great work. Same to you. Well, nothing else really more to say there. So, we keep going on. Next one comes from Agent 418, who says, Hello, Lucky Omega. Have a good weekend, y'all. Same to you, my dude. Same to you. And to the rest of you listening to this, I hope your weekend is going to go fabulously. Mm-hmm, <laughs> fabulous. Yes. But moving swift castingly on forward. Uh, next one comes from the Tyre King, realizing he might... Be screwed by waifu tax in the next Vanguard booster set. Uh-oh, someone has seen something they want, and they are concerned. You gotta watch out for that upcharge. Uh, they say, question, hey guys, I was going through some old Pokemon games, and one in particular, I had about 800 hours worth of play in, of playtime in, and it was flabbergasted about how much time I spent on it. Yes, some people get very obsessed about these games, about collecting little critters, you know, Spending hours just to get a color variant or get one or two step points more. Some of you people are nuts. So my question is there. Uh, my question is, was there any game recently or in the past that you spent way much too time on looking back now? Anyway, that's it for me. Sending good vibes your way. Wah, 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 wah. I hope you have a great evening. Uh, P.S. It was Pokemon Pearl and that is not including a playthrough of Diamond and maybe a replay through of Pearl. So the Pokemon. Some people are really into the Pokemon. Oh, I don't know. If I'm going to be honest, I don't necessarily think of games that I have spent too much time on. If I have spent that, if I, if I have spent that much time on it, it's because I enjoyed that game and it, that is clearly the right amount of time. Every moment that I am enjoying that game is time well spent. So it is never too much time. Yeah, it's one of those things where, like, there's been times when I've been surprised by how much time I've spent on a game, but I'm not really, like, you know, oh, is there a game I spent too much time on? Like, let's see, is there anything that I've, you know, been like, oh, I should have played this game less? I don't think so, you know? Like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm often shocked about how much time I quickly rack up in small things. Like, I spent a lot of time uh, playing uh, Power Wash Simulator, a game I am not technically finished with. I did not necessarily complete all the campaign because I have many other things to do, but I 
that game is, you know, a a uh, a uh, destroyer of time. It just, you know, you you spend all that time pressure washing. Shipbreaker Hard Space is also another game that just kind of like you just zone out and kill kill some time. Uh, and obviously, uh, you know, I'm gonna uh, let let me see. Hold on, I can I can rotate. I'm on the save screen. Yeah. So uh, my my current playtime last save is uh, stopped at 89 hours and 32 minutes. So like. When we do PlayStation stats at the end of this year, uh, March is going to be absolutely obliterated by uh, Rebirth. And Rebirth will probably still be in one of my tippy-topper game zones. I mean, for me, probably. Like, I got, I have Unicorn Overlord, but it's still in the package because I'm still playing Rebirth. I have beaten it. I've beaten it several times. Like, maybe, like, once every other day, I just go re-beat it just so I can see the ending, and I'm just like... Ugh! See, he's really prepping for that spoiler cast. Yeah, no, actually, like, when we do the spoiler cast tomorrow, I'll probably will stream it, and we probably will just go see the ending together. Everyone, you can join me. Yeah, it's probably a good idea to, to do it. <sighs> so we could actually, like, pull up some stuff and have some example of the visuals. But yeah, so, like, uh, and I don't I don't know if I'll be quite as ready to, like, slam myself back into hard mode, but I am i don't know for sure that I'm going to, like, clear up every, you know, mini game or get every collectible first time, so I'll probably still be also playing Rebirth for a little bit after I get the the you know, the tail and the actual ending and credits roll. So it's it's still going to be up there, though I also do have, uh, you know, I'm like 40 hours into P3R to get back to. I will eventually get Unicorn Overlord because uh, Vanillaware uh, it deserves my money. They do. Because the more money you give them, the more money they'll have for their next game that they will yeah. inevitably put all their money into again. Yeah, no, and I've seen a lot of people like vibing, and I'm like, nah, this game is it's gonna be cool. I'll I'll get to it when I get to it. But you know, there's there's only so much fucking you know seminal gameplays of the year to get into, especially when in just about a week, uh, we've got another couple of bangers coming out. Uh, both Dragon's Dogma two and Rise of the Ronin look pretty good. You know, it's uh, it's I... the the ride doesn't end for a while anyway. It don't I have many many things to chew through over time. So I'm. I'm perfectly glad to let, you know, my wallet rest and just s- slowly work through one game at a time. But yeah, I don't I don't usually feel like, oh, I spent too much time in that game. Like I've spent a what for most games is a freakish amount of hours, you know, talking about 800 hours in Pokémon. I don't know what my fucking Final Fantasy 14 stats are like, you know, o- over a year in, but uh they're high. I I'm pretty sure last I checked I was around the 600 hour mark. Is there a way that I can check my my highest time time played in fucking Steam? Uh, uh Steam might have a filter for that. I know that it tracks your gameplay hours. Uh for me that'll be, you know, something like fucking Stellaris or Civ cuz we've spent so much time playing that both solo and in multiplayer and it's like, you know, f- 4X games are absolutely time wreckers, but I have appreciated them all the time. So yeah, there's a lot going on there. Anyway, thank you for your good vibes. I'm going to try and have a great evening because I'm going to fucking go back to smashing Rebirth after this. Luckily, my my video and, and audio editing process is uh, pretty streamlined these days, so it shouldn't take too long to process. Okay, so I've spent 1,671 hours on Warframe. Sounds about right. God, I wonder... I wish... I wish I had a machine that still had Destiny One in st- like a, I could I like my PS4 is packed up. I should fucking check how much time I spent on Destiny One. You know. Uh, let's see here. That'd be Payday Two was another big PC game for me, but that's only mm-hmm. four hundred and twenty-seven hours. Uh, let me check Terraria. Six hundred eighty-three hours for Terraria. Yeah, Terraria is gonna be a lot of hours. Only two hundred seventy-three for Stardew. Uh, let me check Stellaris here. Four hundred and fifty-two for Stellaris. Only 170 hours for Civ 6. Uh, what other games? Uh, Starbound, I think. That was 380 hours. Yeah, no, so I have, uh, if we're talking about just raw as numbers, um, probably my big two are going to be Final Fantasy 14 and Warframe. I don't play Warframe anymore, but not because I don't want to play Warframe. I just don't have the time for Warframe. Yeah, it's a big thing. I think I gotta pull up my Warframe is a good game. I hardly recommend it. <laughs> Let's see if I can pull up my Steam library. No, that's recent activity. Did you find a, a way to, to sort of buy uh, hours, or did you just like eyeball the games I, you remember? I just eyeballed the games I remember. All right. Yeah. So let's let me see. Yeah, my Terraria is gonna be very high. What is it? Yep, two hundred and fourteen hours Terraria. 
should have I spent on talk? Oh, not included. oh, not very many. I should play more oxygen not included. God, how much time have we put in Project Zomboid? Ah, only 47 hours. Mine's probably longer because I play that game more on my own. Yeah. So. Yeah, 333 hours. Yep. Yep. Ah. Uh... Is it under Sid Meier's Civ? Probably, yeah. Yeah, like 150 hours of Civ 6. A bunch of hours of... Yeah. And my PlayStation hours are pretty good. If I could easily reaccess my stats from the end of the year, I would. But that's... Yep, video games. I should check how much my fucking Helldivers time is. That game has only been out a while as well. Oh, I think I have recently... Started. I think you have like 88 hours into it. Because... Yeah... Oh, I'm curious how many hours I put into, we put into Barrow Trauma. Eh, only 63 hours. Anyway, I think it's enough on that, so let's move on. Next next one comes from Soul of the Light Mode Discord, who says, Dear Lightning Ridey Lucky and Omega, Seeker of the Servant Verse. I didn't have a question until Lucky mentioned Mimosa, so I guess what is y'all's a drink of choice? As a barista, I can't escape the espresso martini myself. Happy lot of looping and good vibes. Wah, 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 wah. All around. Wah, 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 wah. Uh, I think I've mentioned this before. I'm kind of a seasonal drinker. Usually it depends on what, like, what the weather is. Usually sets up my, uh, sets up my, uh, drink. Especially if I go, like, out somewhere to drink. If I go to, you know, yonder, lo- yonder local Starbucks, I would just point to the seasonal drink and be like, give me that. And she's like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes, I see. Ugh. So, like, um springs and it's like spring and summer as i'm getting usually like something fruity and cold and then once we hit fall i start going for the warmer drinks that have some sort of like apple or pumpkin or something in it and then winter comes around and it's like chocolate 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 peppermint chocolate and then it's just like you know it just repeats on that so i can't really necessarily say that i have like a drink of choice i just like i enjoy seasonal drinks you don't have an old standby when you go to the bar when I go to the bar, no, definitely, no, especially not when I go to the bar. That's what I kind of figured, but I thought I would ask. No, because like I like I like AMFs, I like um, I like um, Long Island iced teas, I like Sex on the Beach, I like um, tequila, um, sunrise and sunsets. I like screwdrivers. I like nuts and berries. I like um. Lemon sours. I like mojitos. Yeah, a little, maybe a little bit of a tiki lean there, but yeah, that's that's a wide variety. Uh, I think I've mentioned this before, but I'm basically straight edge. I've never really found an an alcohol that I particularly cared for. I'm not gonna say that it's not out there, but I haven't picked it up yet. Uh, if I had to guess, it would probably be something with uh, cola in it, uh, because that's just where my normal taste lies. But yeah, I, you know, does does enjoying a cool, refreshing Dr. Pepper sound iconic enough? Because <laughs> that's me. It's actually kind of funny because there is a YouTube channel. I've mentioned them before, but I'll mention them again. Uh, that I do really enjoy called How to Drink, which is about making mostly alcoholic drinks, but not just that. Uh, you know, he's done some stuff with like carbonating your own water for for like d- making certain things sodified and some other stuff going in there. Uh, but also usually does a little bit of history here and there. So it's it's a very interesting time. But if you want to learn about these sorts of things, check it out. And also occasionally uh, the host, Greg, from How to Drink, uh, he occasionally suffers, either because he doesn't personally care for a cocktail or sometimes he'll deliberately set himself up with a challenge episode where he was like, I don't like Southern Comfort. Can I make drinks from the Southern Comfort official you know, cocktail book and see if they're good? Mostly no, not to hmm. his taste. It is very funny though because uh, he often talks about like things being too sweet and uh, and you know that giving him a headache and I'm like that means it's probably if I were to try this it would be for me I love it sweet the odds that I will find something too sweet are very low still love their sugars you know I I I try for engagement anyway hey if you got a preferred drink order people at home let us know in the comments and also try searching it on you know like I said search on YouTube check for how to drink got a lot of weird stuff in there. Sometimes uh, Kit bashes his own cocktails based off of, uh, uh, what you call it, like pop culture. I know, for instance, that uh, he for sure, uh, I think I first may have even seen, even seen him because he has an episode that was him making the Johnny Silverhand. It was enough that uh, CD Projekt Red actually uh, recognized him and sent him a little care package. But I think that's about that. 
So, unfortunately, that's it for Mailbag. Yeah, I'm a little surprised because, uh, like you said, you, you got this up and out there at a, at a brunch time. Brunch. And uh, we got a, we got a few takers, not as not as many as some weeks, but we had a little check in next week for more, I guess. Uh, the only other order of business that's more normal Let's Tech FGO related is uh, I do still have a note about White Day in here because you hadn't uh, really caught up on the story before last week, and I believe you did catch up on some story this past week. Yeah, no, I completed the story. I'm gonna be real. I didn't do anything else. I did not get a single costume. Oof. Yeah, kind of oof. Well, hopefully they'll come back. Sadly, I the thirteen costumes are cool, but uh, there were a couple I didn't pick up because I don't have those servants unlocked. And at a hundred currency a pop, I don't. I guess they wanted me to roll for Arjuna Altar or something and get those currency CEs. But like that, it, thirteen costumes at a hundred a pop seems like a lot of currency, guys, for an event that's like two, only two weeks long. I know there were some decent drops in there, but yeah. Uh, but what the actual story content, now that you've completed, uh, what, what sort of thoughts and feelings do you have about it? Actually, I did enjoy it. Mm-hmm. It was like, it was this weird, all, I, I feel like there was this weird bipolar energy in it, though. Like, because on one half, you have, you know, the super serious, you know, super bees, you know, that are almost acting like horror movie monsters. And then you have fucking riddles on uh, lateral thinking and playing tag. And I'm just like, oh, okay. Like it's, it's it it's like they were both like somewhat engaging, but at the same time, when I kind of put them together, I'm just all like, "What?" Yeah, that's that's kind of my thoughts. Like it's it's interesting, but it's a very weird vibe because it's like it it really starts as literally invoking they live. Like it it feels like a a seventies like cult classic horror film, but then Merlin wants to play logic puzzles. It's a it's a little weird. I I. I kind of, like, wonder about, like, how this got written. Was it just, like, oh, shit, you know, we had a White Day event. Uh, we're going to we're gonna do something. We need to involve some some servants for some some costumes. What are we going to do? Yeah, the, ta- the tag section felt a little long. Like, it was, it was interesting as a concept, but it was, like, basically like a little micro story, you know? So, yeah, it's, it's, it's good. I, 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 I feel like they did... What's the phrase? They've uh, they did a good job with um, like you know, there's like thirteen of these character costumes, right? I think they did a good job of like at least featuring everybody who got a costume. Yeah, which is nice because there were so many of them. But yeah, an 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 an, an odd quirky little event. Uh, besides, you know, bringing up the fact that we played tag. Any other particular moments you wanna wanna call out that stick in your mind? Uh, I did like the, I did like the, like, the lateral thinking parts and the puzzle of, um, the, uh, crossing the river. It's like, did anyone get stumped by that one? Did anyone not figure out that answer? Yeah, do you know? I do, I do guess that, like, the, the lateral thinking parts was, was probably, like, a metaphor for how we solved the situation, right? Right. But it, it does kind of, like I said, it, it, the way we got into that is kind of odd still. Yeah, uh, for those of you who um, did not get it, uh, basically the way that you solve the uh, river crossing one is the um, the farmer would basically take over an item, come back, grab another item, and then he would take the first item back with him across the water, and he would just take items back and forth until all three were across the across the um, water. Uh, for example, I believe they said it was like a goat, cabbage, and wolf. Like, yeah, so if you basically take over the wolf, come back then you could take the um you would take um then you would grab the um the goat go back bring the wolf back well no actually i messed that up but it's basically that yeah it's like because the basically the gist was you couldn't leave like like you couldn't leave the wolf and the goat alone you can leave the goat and the cabbage alone but you could leave the wolf and the cabbage alone so nah but basically you basically take over like the goat first and then i think you have to leave that but yeah yeah, you take the goat first. But, um, yeah, because it goes goat. I can't remember it off the top of my head anymore. I'm trying to do it off that. Make me go bleh. But the, um, so I enjoy, like, so I enjoy a little stuff like that. And the whole bit with, you know, picking which teams you fought with was, um, I thought was pretty clever. Like, you have to figure out, like, no, you can't, you can't, you can't let them, you can't let them get the fucking sun powers of Ajuna, not Juna, of, uh, Karna and, um, Gawain, because that'd be very bad bad and then you have to pick which one's like all right they will have powers 
I accidentally stumbled into fucking um, having them pick up um, Nobukatsu's powers last, which apparently was the correct choice because that um, basically weakens them at the end. I'm like, perfect. Like, I'm kind of curious to see what would happen if I had gone the other way. But again, I wasn't super into the event overall. Like, this ain't FGO's fault, I'm going to say. This has just been a me thing. Ever since I, like, lost my job, I have been... My natural, like, rhythm has been completely off. Not helped also by the fact that, you know, we got a daylight savings time in here and, and other stuff going on. Yeah, no. So it's just, like, I... It's just been a hard time. It's just been a hard time for me to play uh, gotcha games and whatnot. Your your vibes have been displaced. It happens. I felt my own displaced vibes. I definitely have to remember to put away my laundry after this. Do while the episode's editing. Well, not all the attention, but yeah, Rebirth got a lot of playtime. I know Lucky's been staying up late to beat it. I've also been staying up late to beat it. Real old school video game vibes. But yeah, uh, well, that was White Day. Mm hmm. Let's see. Let me see. Let me see the mission clock. Uh, just just under forty minutes. Back in the day when we had when we literally had to cut off mailbag questions because we got so many of them. Stares into camera. Uh, we would have had it a lot longer, but yeah, it's a short news week. Uh, I do still have enough. Uh, quote unquote, what's up? Uh, talking points to bring up. Uh, to oh, probably okay. round us out to to a little at least unedited. Uh, no guarantees on the compressed time, but unedited to closer to an hour. But we got a few. Uh, first of all, I'll say this because it's painful to me specifically. Also, a lot of other Pain. people in our uh, Discord. But uh, it turns out the Battlefront Classic Collection is a fuster cluck. Um, yeah. Shocking, I know. The company releasing these remasters that um, has had to like restart development on the remaster slash remake of KOTOR 1 like twice uh, did not produce a product that was fully fleshed out. So, uh, the primary problems are twofold. One, uh, allegedly, and this is probably why they, I've, I've heard some back and forth on the crossplay. I have to double check, but I think they don't have it. Um, but I'm going to assume they don't. But, uh, supposedly they had three whole servers for launch day, three entire servers, which meant, uh, players were capped at 200 players per server. Uh, which considering this is a mode of the game where they're talking about, hey, now finally everybody can enjoy you know, 64-player multiplayer, not a lot of players at a 200 cap. Uh, <laughs> additionally, this you know low collection of servers has allegedly led to issues with uh, lag, connectivity, and other problems going on. Also, though this was pre-advertised, this is still a sticking point, especially because the servers are so bad. Uh, the two games together, you know, the downloading the whole collection is like 63 gigs. Uh, obviously, you know, I'm fairly certain that the textures have been like AI upscaled to like 2K or 4K, which is why it's huge. But you can literally buy Battlefront 1 and 2, the original ones, on Steam, and those combined are about 11 gigs for the old school, you know, 2005 versions. Um, and yeah, it's just it's just a little sad. I, I was hoping this would be a nice clean release to get some super nostalgia on. Um, I'm probably just going to, you know, if I was going to, I would just see, because I already own uh, Battlefront 2 on Steam, because it usually costs you uh, 10 bucks and often less uh, if, you know, some of the old Du Bois want to get together and do it that way, because, damn, uh, it's uh, it's it's a little bit of a bummer. Yeah, unfortunately, I, was never, I never got into Star Wars Battlefront, so I have no horse in this race, so I'm just all about, all I can say is, damn. Yeah. I mean, if it was a good, clean run, I'd love to, maybe with the normal version, if we can swing that, like I said, it's cheap. Uh, it would probably be pretty funny to uh, to, to, to stream or record a run of the uh, the single player for Battlefront 2. Um, for a lot of uh, Star Wars fans, that's kind of uh, iconic, because it's got Tamara Morrison, the voice of all the clone troopers, and Jango Fett narrating, basically, like, from, from Geonosis to Battle of Hoth as the 501st um and it's got some for for 2005 it's got some decent mission design uh also um there's many many uh clone wars uh hell divers memes but uh it would be great exper to experience that together because you can uh you can get a uh, star wars version of space nom because there's a felucia level yes there are fucking Ackley trying to eat you it's uh super great wasn't felucia in force unleashed yes okay I, I do remember that. as well and it was the oh. It was in a very brief shot in the third movie with all the. It was the super bright fungal planet, but uh, it's uh, it's a it's a wild time. Often has some very crazy maps when it's in Star Wars games, but yeah, it's it's a bummer that the classic collection is uh, not better. 
But uh, in terms of game news that is good, besides, like I say, you know, getting early previews for uh, Rise of Ronin and, and Dragon's Dogma rolling out, things are looking pretty good. A lot of people having fun with Dragon's Dogma 2 character creator. Some are having too much fun and making curse shit. Yes, as as happens with every character creator that, that I think comes out. Get, get ready for a lot of Dragon's Dogma 2 character creator memes. Uh, but I do appreciate that Capcom has launched several, uh, what they're calling, you know, official, you know, partnered pawns. You've got several people, uh, you know, content creators and the like who have made, you know, pawns that are going to be distributed in the game. And I'm like, that's neat. That's neato to, to set up the defaults that way. But uh, things are looking up there. But I do actually have a couple bits of PlayStation news I've seen circulating today we can touch on briefly. Okay. Uh, first of all, as usual, uh, state of play rumors. Uh, the the words upon the wind are that we're looking at a May probably going on again because uh, they did May last year. True enough. Um, but also, uh, generally the the vib is that uh, this will coincide roughly with the uh, Ghost of Tsushima uh, PC release, uh, and also will very likely. Uh, be a Ghost of Tsushima 2 release, like, uh, an announcement. That'd be pretty nice. So I think that will, uh, that'll line up that way. And, uh, yeah, no, it's it's an interesting one, and, uh, I think that's probably likely. Um, I think we can be, I would guess, based on what Sony has said, that we may not see Ghost of Tsushima 2 this year, but we might. I think they said for sure that in the first half of 24, they don't have any first-party titles, uh, that are gonna pop off. But, obviously, they're you know, uh, Rebirth is actually selling pretty well globally. Very very well rated people are coming out, and uh, a lot of people, I think, are expecting Rise of the Ronin to be, you know, similarly treated. And also, um, you know, uh, we're getting some of those um, Xbox games coming over. Uh, I do think it was, it may have been last week, but I forgot to mention it, but I did actually see some very funny internet agita where apparently it seemed like some of the, the like, Xbox diehards, by which I mean that, like, Microsoft and Phil Spencer have literally installed chips to rewrite their neurons in their brain type diehards. Uh, we're a little upset that actually uh, Sea of Thieves was selling very well on PlayStation when it dropped. It was like number one on the store that weekend. Really? Yeah. Um, and like a, a lot of people being like, oh, you know, the Sony players are hypocrites. And it's like, no, games are cool. <laughs> they, Microsoft decided to port your game. PlayStation players are like, fuck yeah, we'll do it. We'll check it out. Um, and, you know, I mean, I may eventually get around to it. Sea of Thieves does seem like a neat game, and I'm glad to be able to, to play it on a console I own. Um, I suspect something similar will happen, uh, because I think Hi-Fi Rush is coming to PlayStation next week. Also coming to Steam. But yeah, you know, uh, some very interesting brews going on, so I don't think PlayStation's looking, uh, too bad. Uh, but, as usual, uh, PS5 Pro rumors are, are circulating. When are they not circulating? Yeah, um, they almost always are. Everybody's kind of second-guessing where it is, but... Uh, this these do seem to have coalesced around some some sort of like patents or other documentation Sony has filed, um, and the rumors are saying a holiday twenty four release, so end of this uh-huh. year. Uh, talking about some of the features it'll have, like uh, a dedicated AI core for uh, upscaling, and uh, you know built in like ray tracing features and stuff. So uh, you know. Letting PlayStation jump to some of the cooler features that uh, PC gaming has been getting lately, uh, you know, giving you a higher end. I guess we'll see, you know, how it shakes out. Uh, I probably won't have a PS5 Pro in my budget this this holiday season. Still haven't picked up PSVR, which I'm sure will cost less money. But it is, you know, uh, definitely like, you know, interesting to hear kind of like what the what the rumors what the rumor do come out. What the rumors say, and uh, it's it's interesting to you know hear the 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 vibes. We'll we'll like I said we'll see exactly what. Um, I'm I'm wondering like at the the you know at a potential May or like June period you know uh release like you know that's that's most than halfway through the year. I don't I don't know if they would announce the PS5 Pro at Pro 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 the PS5 Pro. Uh, I don't know if they would actually like announce that at the the middle of the year, you know, PlayStation State of Play or showcase. They might if it's if it's coming out holiday, they might you know say for sure we got it more features. But I, like I said, I guess we'll we'll figure them up. We'll vibe later. 
That's that's all upcoming news. Let's see. Uh, well, I mean, uh, we mentioned it earlier, but we also uh, do still play a little Helldivers. Helldivers 2 still happening. You guys played a lot yesterday, actually. Yeah. I got in for a couple of games when uh, my connection wasn't fucking me. I may try straight up switching to the, the wireless uh, if we do that again sometime, which will probably be this weekend because there's, there's stuff to do. Uh, we've got, you know, uh, big missions coming out. You know, there was the release of the exosuit, which which happened, and there was that whole kind of mini plot there that moved into uh, our current vibes, which is trying to uh, activate the Terminid control system on the barrier planets to, like, quote-unquote, permanently control the Terminids and, you know, lock them down, uh, which has already allegedly resulted in flying bugs. I haven't seen one myself, but there's footage on the internet. Uh, there have also been in-game rumors and people taking screenshots of some stuff going on with some blue lasers. A lot of people are suspecting that the uh, the third faction from Helldivers 1, the Illuminate, are uh, going to be coming back as probably another big event push. Uh, I guess we'll see. You know, we've only got one planet left, and uh, for all I know, they may have actually finished uh, Errata Prime uh, while we've been here jawing, which would be nice. Maybe. Get those, uh, get those fitty war bonds. Need those medals. But, uh, yeah, uh, it's, you know, the, the plot stuff is going on. I obviously, like, I, I've, I've said this before off mic, obviously they have, like, an internal roadmap. You know, they've got a lot of these events and stuff they're proccing to keep people interested. I, I do kind of wish that they might, like, take a step back and, and focus on some of the, the, you know, quality of life stuff. Uh, the games are still pretty unstable. You know, I got, well, some of that was obviously, I think, on my end with like my own internet connection and, and issues you sometimes have with the PS5. But other times, I was just dropped by Helldiver servers. You know, uh, I know Loth kind of goes back and forth on like getting occasional bouts of of lag and other stuff. Obviously, he is in Australia, but you know, this is a we 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 can hope for like some some better server coverage because you know uh, the company that produces this game is in Stockholm, so you know the the internet connections are going to be all over the place. Um, I'm on, like, PS5. I've recently been experiencing bugs where, like, the game will forget my, like, loadouts and, like, constantly be resetting my tooltips, you know, my tutorials and stuff. I know some other people have been getting that. Uh, apparently they've only just recently reproduced the friend code bug that have been, have been <laughs> hitting a lot of people and are working on it, so, uh, I'd, I'd love to see some more of that, that fixings, but, uh, we do got a new premium war bond released recently. And uh, generally, uh, it sounds pretty good. Uh, I've I've heard some debate on whether or not some of the new laser weapons are actually good, but generally people are saying the, the arc and plasma shotguns seem pretty fun. Uh, and the big one is uh, the stun grenades that you can get in the new Premium Warbond. Apparently they will stun anything, including uh, Bile Titans, which is pretty cool. That sounds like that'll be very useful for select mission types in the future. Yeah. Uh, and personally, I just love the maximum clown shoes potential of these arc resistant armors. Um, <laughs> gives you like ninety percent arc damage resistance, so you can do funny things like uh, have your buddy with the arc thrower uh, use you as the chain link to hit targets farther away. Uh, you can waltz through your own Tesla tower, so it, it, it seems like a fun time. Uh, and and in in general, I like and I I think I think. The the alleged spawn fixes have have been pretty good. Um, we are still, you know, bumping into two chargers and other heavily armored enemies. Um, and it always does seem like God, there are so many hunters. But uh, I I feel like we have noticed that like that thing that would happen where you'd spot one charger and then you'd look away and suddenly it would be two or three chargers doesn't seem to be happening anymore. Like, uh, like I said, you guys, you guys played for a lot longer yesterday than I did. How, how did you feel with spawns? I know that you guys mostly focused on uh, bottos, not bugs. But did you, did you feel like the, the spawns of heavy enemies was more spread out? Yeah, no. Like, I think we ran on, we ran into um, stalwarts on a semi regular basis. But when we, we only like ever run into like one Hulk at a time. And I think there was a couple times like when we were in the higher difficulties, we would get the big bot drops on us and they would drop a, ta a like a tank on us. And that was a much of ah! kind of moment. But we never fought. I don't think we ever really fought more than like one Hulk at a time or more than one tank at a time. So but yeah, there was usually like, I think there's a lot more stalwarts than you, than there was previously. Uh, and probably probably a, probably more rocket raiders, too. Now that I think about it. Sadly, I think the rocket 
raiders and and guys count as as light enemies technically well they are very easy to kill it's just the fact that they have a rocket launch that hits you you probably die yeah the 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 i i know obviously that like guys toting rocket launchers should be pretty pretty tough and they are kind of uh they like technically for firing rockets they are kind of inaccurate i i like i've i've seen people talk about on like the subreddit and the the seen like video footage clips on twitter and stuff that like it they do kind of like have a randomized method where their rockets kind of like juke at longer ranges. Like they will fire and kind of like seemingly randomly input kind of an adjustment. So they usually aren't firing literally right at you. Um, but if they're close to you, the fact that there's some like built in scatter doesn't matter. And uh, it, uh, also, a, a lot of issue with this game is just kind of like how inherently chaotic it gets, right? Which is part of the appeal. But also, uh, I definitely feel like, I don't know, like, enemies could use more, like, audio-visual cues for different types. Like, there is some good audio design in this. Like, uh, you know, I, I you know I know when we're, like, stalking around low and slow that we can always go, like, ooh, hold on. You know, is it, do I hear bugs scrabbling, you know? Do we hear some bots clanking? Is the music picking up? But <laughs> what, once you're actually in it and, like, the battle music is blaring and there's a lot of gunshots, it's like, how would I know there's a rocket raider creeping up behind me, right? Right. So, yeah, they, they, there's still some balance to be done, but I, I feel like we're getting closer to the vibes. And I know that, like, I know some people in our fucking Discord uh, must not sleep or do anything but play Helldivers 2 because they're, like, maxed out on all their currencies, but uh, I do kind of wish that, you know, uh, it was a little more approachable with some of the, the metal grind. I guess uh, getting all of these major orders back-to-back is really helping uh, when it works. But boy, you need a lot of you need a lot of war bonds to get some stuff. I'm not all the way done with the uh, the last premium one. Still gotta pick up my uh my own uh jar five. Which does seem like a uh generally, you know, people say it's a it's a decent weapon. You know, got a got that little bit of extra AoE zip. Can be useful for, for certain situations. But yeah, Helldivers is cooking. I hope to get some more grinding of that over this weekend. But yeah. Uh Lucky, anything from you this week? I would assume probably not because of rebirth, but anything else going on with you you want to bring up? Want to talk about stuff? No, not in not in particular. Like I said, I haven't actually got to sit down and play over over oh unicorn over oh, wow, what was I about to say? Overcorn? <laughs> Overcorn <Unicorn>, Udalord. <laughs> oh no. Um like I have the collector's edition of it, so you know, I did my part in that, but like I said, I am still going through Rebirth. I've actually been doing the hard chapters. <sighs> Excuse me. Uh, right now, I am uh, listening to the um, House Electro of Mount Coral. Mm-hmm. And now that I have, um, now that I have beat um, Rebirth, I can go, you know, online and you know watch YouTube stuff and you know go on Twitter again. Uh, Twitter is a flame in people. I don't know any other word that I can say nicely. And people are fighting over everything. I swear, every time I go on Twitter, I either see like Tifa or Aerith trending, and it's just full of people be going, going like, um, either, uh, yes, uh, clearly this was the one true heroine all along, and I'm just like, guys, oh really? my god. Well, th- I'm. It's it's so sad that like it's fucking cyclical, but also at the very least, this debate has been raging since 1997. <laughs> It's true. It's true. Now we people just have a, just have means to an easy access of communication, so they can just force pe- force feed people their opinions. And what it's not like this was was unknown to the the remake team. There, there's a literal couple of ladies in uh, the Sector Seven slums in remake who are basically arguing about Tifa and Aerith without arguing about Tifa and Aerith. Um, <laughs> one of them is talking about a you know. Uh, a, a sporty, athletic, black and white ensemble, was the other ones talking about a classic floral pink, and so it's like, yeah, okay, that's that's a metaphor for the two main ladies of, of Final Fantasy VII. So I, at actually, least Square Enix understands this. Well, I think Square Enix actually understands this more than than you. Know, I actually read an article about, um, oh, I can't remember. I think it was a writer for the original Final Fantasy VII. Um, actually, uh had a bit of regret over the original game because they felt like like when talking to their coworkers, um they their coworkers said it's like, oh Tifa and Aerith looks like they don't get along. And the writer was like, that that wasn't intended. I wanted them to have a super good friendship, you know, and have them, you know, 
really be fair there for Cutter for each other. And that's so they've been really glad to to uh be able to revisit that. And as you can see in remake and in rebirth, uh Tifa and Aerith they get real tight. Real tight. Yeah. So Oh no, I mean um again, I don't want to get into the full spoiler cast, but that to that note, uh there's a great moment when you do return to Nibelheim and you can go up on the on the the water tower with, with Aerith and she's like risen on cloud for, you know, uh like, oh, did you you wait up here? You sit up here a lot waiting for a wave, and Cloud's like, I don't know, whatever. You know, you can pick a couple different options. Aerith straight up says, if it were me, I'd be waiting up here. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, Aerith, come on. You say the quiet part out loud now. This is not going to make, the, the internet's not going to calm down. <laughs> it's okay. They don't have to calm down. Um, We're having a great time. Having a good time. It's never inappropriate to sing Queen. Oh, actually, I should say, because we didn't talk about it. Uh, Legendary did post something in the patron chat. Uh, did, you, did you see this note about uh uh the some people doing some of the the stellar blade testing oh yeah no like i I saw that okay and i'm just like yeah okay yeah, like trust yeah. me i like my horny on i like my horny on main here but if you want to see that true jiggle you got to work for it baby makes sense to me yeah no uh the the making it so that you you can get you know the 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 sort of nude skin but that that means that you're not wearing armor or shield so uh get good scrub and no, people will get good yeah, I mean, also, I, I do like, though, that, like, because obviously some people have tried to characterize a little bit as, like, oh, it's a it's a horny game, it's a cooler game, and it's like, uh, yes, but actually, no. Like, yeah, sure, you could slap on that skin. Uh, If you're just doing this to look, you better be good at video games, bruh. Probably. Probably because it's funny. Yeah, it'll become a speedrun category. How fast can you beat the game with the, the nude No Shield outfit? But yeah, uh, I have seen a few gameplay clips that people, uh, you know, grabbed of the, the demo. I'm actually, like, very much anticipating like when that demo is actually gonna gonna drop for for propers, you know, because mm-hmm. obviously it was a, a misfire previously. So I would love to check it out because I, I know some people have got a few different vibes on the uh, the way the game actually plays. Yeah, no, uh, a lot of people have been talking about like um, uh, Star Blade literally wears its uh, near influences on its sleeve. Um, this is something I actually learned in the last week that while. Um, they do have like their own composer. I do believe that Cosmograph has been working on the game along with some others. They did actually was able to get uh, Keiichi Okabe, the main composer for Gear, on it as well. So some of those tracks is you know the man himself. Uh, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting for some like special thanks to Yoko Taro in the credits now because I'm pretty sure he's gonna like. I just want him to slide into the DMs. I mean, I'm pretty sure he already had a tweet that was like, "Everybody buy this game." So like, yes, no, he I, I was like, "Everyone buy this game." Thanks. Oh, though, speaking of music, that just reminded me of something else I just saw today because the uh, the Airhead CEO tweeted it, but I posted this in our, our music channel. But um, there's apparently a fan-made full album of Sea Shanties to Dive to, Helldiver-themed Sea Shanties. <laughs> what? Yeah, it's a whole album. I got the I got the link in our music channel. It's it's hang on, uh, listen hang a little on, bit. Hang. It's it's pretty crazy. They got it's like a full fifty minutes. Sea Shanties to Dive. Yeah. <laughs> and like I said, I don't he, know. Uh, he uh, the the CEO tweeted it so like they're they're aware that's that's cute that is cute but again uh, Stellar Blade is probably going to be is until I get a job probably going to be the last game I get so no I am very excited for it um let's see here and I'm hoping it and I'm hoping it does have a fair amount of uh, replayability like I said apparently like with the um assorted uh, costumes having like different effects than whatnot I'm hoping. You know, there are different ways to play. I have heard people talking about while it seems uh, gameplay is more uh, Sekiro in nature, but more forgiving, I believe they said. Um, yeah. A lot of uh, focus on parrying and whatnot, but I do believe the game says that they have, uh, I believe they have difficulty sliders and other as assist uh, things to assist players. So you can go from either end of the spectrum of, you know, making it really simply to play into making it really complex, which I think is good. I think that's personally good. You let the game be as easy or as hard as you want. Yeah, I've I've been really fond of of some games getting in on this action with like very dynamic difficulty sliders because this is a thing I will actually talk about a little in um uh in uh FF7 Rebirth, but like that just has one difficulty switch. And yes, I uh, according to the internet anyway, switching to easy does make mini games easier. It also makes combat like it, at least from my experience of trying it out, like in in the previous game, way too easy. Like that's like there there's 
that the game is already really easy to get over leveled in, and obviously you can do the dynamic leveling to make everything level sync. Uh, that sounds like it would kick my ass though if everybody was constantly level sync to me because like a lot of these fights are pretty complicated. So I, uh, I feel like I would appreciate the ability to just be like, no, no, I just like my mini games to be a little less ball busting, you know, or some maybe even just specific ones, or maybe some like specific parts of, like, the, the interface. I know that, like, um, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, for instance, had a lot of different difficulty sliders you could play with. Uh, Control did as well, if I remember yes. correctly. Yeah, I, I, had a, I had a lot of fun. There are parts of, parts of Control I played basically in, like, heaven or hell mode. <laughs> <laughs> you know, t- no extra health or, or damage reduction for me, but, yeah, but kill enemies in one hit, so it's like, alright, well, if I get tagged, this is gonna suck, but if I get you, you're gone. A lot of other dumb stuff you could do with that. Yeah, control control was was another good game that was was like that. But obviously, I I think it takes some you know work. No, um, Stellar Blade is looking up to be a I don't want to say necessarily a sleeper hit now because the demo leaked and a lot of people got their hands on it. And people are like, oh my god, it's actually really good. But I am I am um, quite happy to see it. I do, do think I talked about this earlier that um, one of the Sony big execs went over to Korea, visited Shifts Up Studios, and played a demo of the game. He was like, mm, "I like it. I'm gonna throw money at this." Yeah, and basically did not. You know, I think the interesting thing is they did not take like direct like oversight o- over it. Um, because Stellar Blade is like I think we mentioned this before. It's a second party game. Yeah. Um, so that basically means that, uh, Sony is directly investing in it without necessarily, you know, taking control of the studio or anything. So to me, that, that speaks of, you know, Sony believes it's going to be a good product even without, you know, I mean, if you want to look it, at the pedigree, right? What, what are the other games Sony has done that kind of thing for, right? Um, uh, Final Fantasy 16 and, and seven mostly like yeah. they, they're like, Hey, Square, we're going to pay you, put this on our console, develop solely for us. Uh, whatever support you need, call us. We're good. And it's like, sh- this is Shift Up's first, you know, like double A type game, you know, major console release. Um, and and Sony was like, no, we like this. Give us that. Give us that shit. Give us that good shit. And it's like, yeah, that that's definitely a sign that there's some vibes, especially as actually in this kind of like, uh, time of of kind of you know, some of the slimming down that even Sony's been doing, even though they apparently have been succeeding a lot. Um. Like some some of their their new introspective like first or second party games, uh, especially some of the multiplayer ones, have actually uh, you know allegedly been shuttered. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say that the Last of Us multiplayer game was deliberately part of that. That that game was in development hell for like two or three years before I think we finally definitively said with this last round of closures that it's donezo. But yeah, it's you know uh, a wild time. So it'll it'll be good for it to to come out and for us to see the vibs. Like I said, you know, people people calling to like like action games. I'm like, I'm I'm down for that. I like these games. I, I, I if it's possible to tweak some things, I do hope that there's some room for some uh, some classic witch time esque shenanigans because uh, I you know never played Sekiro and practiced my parrying. But like I said, played a lot of Bayonetta. Very used to that witch time. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I was reminded of a couple other things. We did cross an hour, so we don't gotta we don't gotta lurk too long. But I do have a couple other things to really briefly mention. One thing uh, in Metal Gear news that I actually hope is a another positive vibe is um uh that uh konami have recently launched an official video they're calling uh, metal gear solid League legacy series oh uh, hosted by david hater oh. which explains the plot of metal gear that sounds pretty sick yes um so i'm very hopeful this is a lead up because it says it's official series part one i haven't watched it myself yet i uh do not really need a reminder of what's going on in metal gear solid <laughs> I mean, we have been playing our current (laughs) current ongoing stream series, so we're we're pretty caught up. Um, But I am very interested because obviously that would be a great lead into either some Delta news, like maybe a release date or some actual some some more in depth trailers. I know there is some gameplay footage out there, or also uh, because we are playing the Legacy Collection for our stream series right now. uh, You and I are both heartily anticipating a Metal Gear Legacy Collection Volume Two announcement. Um, I I would really like to be able to play Metal Gear Solid Four again, guys. Yeah, give me four, three, Peace Walker, and all the fucking um, yeah, and all the uh, the side games, the weird games. Throw Ghost Babble on that shit. Yeah, Snakes please Revenge put a too. please put a Ghost Babble emula- uh, emulation on there. I I so want to be able to play fucking Game Boy Advance Metal Gear. <laughs> That'll be so funny. 
Uh, also, it is supposed to like that was the one that was made as like the weird side angle to to Metal Gear, the original Metal Gear Solid, you know. So like, they've got bosses named like you know, uh, what are their names? Like Marionette Owl and like the Blade Falcon or something. Like they they got some Metal Gear ass names, and I'm like, yeah. I think the thing I like the thing I want most is I want the niche Japanese things like. I would love for fucking them to have got like David Hayter and, you know, the old voice actors to like record the fucking audios, the drama C- CDs for English. I would listen to those. God, are you kidding me? Oh, yeah, that'd be a real great extra touch. Sadly, that would re- probably require a little bit of extra work on Konami's part. And it does seem like at least for the the uh, what you call it, the uh, master collections, you know, they're not they're not necessarily going extra out of their way. Like they, they gave you some options. They gave you some bundles, but. It, it seems like they're saving their brand new content for the remake for now. But you never know. We'll we'll see. We'll see what's happened. Like I said, I'm I'm anticipating that announcement. I know a lot of a lot of people when the first one got announced were like, "Man, there's no way they're going to do Metal Gear Solid 4." And it's like, I they, they got to. And I did actually hear that apparently Sony has officially been talking like there's been some like LinkedIn postings and stuff, some job listings that like Sony is once again hiring and talking to more specialists in in software emulation. And it sounds like they're trying to, like, do more built-in emulators for, like, uh, PS1, 2, and 3 games on the PS5. Good. Uh, which is always good to, good to hear, so, you know. Maybe. Maybe someday. Soon. We'll hope. Because, like, f- 4... 3 is really good. 4 puts such a, a capstone on a lot of things. And also, I've been watching you play, you know, 2 and 3. Uh, I'm not actually playing it myself, but I know your pain, and I'm just like, man, I can't wait for Metal Gear Solid 4 where the gameplay gets really good. I'll no, like, like I, I am slightly, I am slightly, um, bothered that next week's stream is going to be half of me just continually trying to pl- get the fucking Fury non-lethally. Hey, spoilers! It's going to be called the Fury. I called the last one the Fury. This one's going to be the Fury, even though the Fear was a lot easier. But yeah, no, I mean, it's 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 what what it's what we got to do. And, you know, I I I'm I'm pretty sure if you actually uh, kill him, it counts on counts against you. Yep. So I'm just like, gotta 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 ride it out, you know. But that 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 be how it be. Uh, the only other thing I do want to really quickly mention is a quick plug before I do wrap this up. Because like I said, I've got I'm I'm just sitting here while the flutes go, man. By the way, just Chef's kiss on that choice of arrangement. By the way, picking the flute flutes as the instrumentation for Cosmo Canyon. Good work. Thumbs up. No nuts. Um, but uh, I just kind of was like recently reinvigorated to the fact that uh, there's a TV show that I uh, fucking love. Uh, I'm sure you I've mentioned it before and you guys know about it, but uh, it's Psych. Yeah. Great show. Uh, but I, uh, I was recently just scrolling through Reddit and was turned on to a, uh, three hour in-depth analysis of the series, pitching it as one of the best homages and adaptations of Sherlock Holmes ever, uh, which I agree with. Yeah, I can see that. Cause it's, it's not a, it's not a literal adaptation. The author of the video even admits that's kind of clickbait, but it is definitely a Sherlock homage because that's like, that's Sean Spencer's thing is he's like a Sherlock. He's got an eidetic memory and super observation. And his buddy, Burton Guster, is a pharmaceutical rep, so he's a doctor. And he's the, you know, the straight man. The Watson. Um, and it's a great three-hour video. You should look it up. I've, you know, that I've provided you the, the Psych is the best Sherlock. But I'm like, man, it's been a long time since I watched Psych. Luckily, it's on Amazon Prime, so I can actually watch all of it. But I would need some free hours. But I'm like, man, I gotta watch Psych again. That show's so good. And I didn't even think I've technically seen everything. Because they produced, like, three movies after they, they wrapped on television. And are apparently still, like, everybody who worked on that show is still down to climb to make more, which is great. You love to see it. But uh, how how many times, Chad, have you heard me heard me say, I've heard it both ways? <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's, it's such a quotable show. Check it out. Like I said, check out that video, and if you haven't ever watched Psych, like, check it out. It's, it's solid. But yeah, uh, that seems like a good spot to wrap up there. We're at about hour 15, you know, a decent chunk of that will get edited out. It's a, it's a lovely bite-sized Let's Tech FGO. Once again, I'm reminding you, if you're listening to this on YouTube, uh, go ahead and slam your bell on your sub right now. We'll get that out of the way. Um, keep your eyes peeled. Uh, if you're on our Discord, keep keep an eye to our announcement channel. We will be doing a spoiler cast stream of, of FF7 Rebirth at some point on Saturday is, is the plan, depending on how long it takes me to shake out everything. And uh, probably Lucky will be uh, be showing the footage of, of Bits and Bobs. You know, of Aerith and Bobs. Yeah. Just just talk about, you know, because we, you know, we can do chapter skip and stuff. We can actually, like, play out yeah, some moments jump. and show you some footage. 
Uh, so, you know, keep your eyes peeled on that. Though, obviously, if you are avoiding spoilers yourself, you're not all cut up. You don't have to watch right away. But, you know, watch it in your own due time. Uh, yeah, I had a couple couple notes I could have said there. But, no, I'll leave that for the actual uh, cast talking about other FF7-related stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, we'll uh, we'll wrap up here. I already told you to make sure you're, you're subbed and you've rung the bell. Make sure you like this video. Leave your comments below. Join our Discord. It's a great place to, to get news like this and other things. Hang out. Yell about Helldivers, yell about Yu-Gi-Oh, all the other things our Discord is is chatting about. Uh, we have a JP channel if you want want somewhere to uh, yell and scream about, you know, whatever's happening with Audio Call 2 in a week-ish. Uh, consider joining our channel membership for access to membership badges and emotes. And consider supporting us on Patreon to get access to episodes early in audio format for as little as a dollar you do a month or approximately $10 a year. And other fine things. And also help support us. Uh, that'll be the end of Let's Talk FGO. Stay tuned for the FF7 spoiler cast and also for uh, Metal Gear Solid 3 on Monday. Oh, also, one last plug. Hey, uh, I finished Shadowbringers, finally. So yeah. uh, this Wednesday, Endwalker. And also probably the... Uh, uh, actually, no, I'm, I might do the, the Hatching Tide Little Ladies Day thing earlier. We'll see if I got the time, if I find the times. But there's a pink gaboo, so I'm definitely going to do it. <laughs> gaboo! Gaboo. Uh, and I think that's where, that's, that's where we have to end it. We have to wrap the show on gaboo. So thanks very much for tuning in, guys. We'll see you next time. Good night and good day, everyone.